All right, our next speaker is Cesar Tejador. He is going to demonstrate today Tibetan's Kun Yi Yu massage. It's a beautiful, beautiful treatment. Now, Caesar is the founder and CEO of Massage Around the World, a company that provides high quality uh, education for massage therapists, and he also has authored 19 spa training books. He's an amazing, amazing guy with beautiful energy, and I hope you guys are going to enjoy this demo. Please help me welcome Caesar Tejador. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Thank you. thank you all. Well, thanks for being here today. It's a pleasure for me. As Diana said, today I'm going to talk about the Tibetan Kunye massage. But I also would like to take some time in order, you, in order to introduce you the holistic concept that embraces this wonderful technique and that you need to take into account if you really want to make an effective treatment. By the way, my name is Cesar and I come from Spain. Okay. So I started my professional career working as a physical therapist in different rehabilitation centers and hospitals and also teaching massage in different schools. But then I found out then I was focusing my teachings and my treatments basically on the physical body. But we are not only skin, flesh, and bones, we are much more. So that's why I decided to open my eyes and I traveled around Asia during the next 15 years of my life in order to learn more holistic techniques, in order to look at the human in a more holistic way. Because of course, then we are physical body, but we are also mind, we are energy, we are emotions, and only by taking all these aspects into account, we will be able to reach health, beauty, and well-being in a more complete, durable, and effective manner. And it doesn't matter if you are a massage therapist, if you are an aesthetician, if you are a doctor or nurse, if you want to succeed, by giving a real effective treatment, you need to take all these aspects into account. Physical body, mind, energy, emotions, and all this has to be in balance with social environment and natural environments. Otherwise, the treatment will be not complete. Okay, uh, today I will talk about the practice of the Tibetan Kunye massage. This massage, it's a very important part of the medical, Tibetan medical tradition. And it is done by Tibetan doctors when it's applied with medical purposes, but it's also done by massage therapists and aestheticians when it is done with balancing, preventive, with aesthetic and relaxing purposes. So you don't need to be a doctor if you want to practice this holistic method. Okay, uh, the massage itself, it's quite easy. It's just the sum of different massage strokes that you need to apply, and you need to apply different pressure points on different energy points. But once that you learn the complete protocol, in a way, it's easy like any other massage technique. What it's more complicated, it's everything that you need to take into account in order to look at your client in a more holistic way. The most complicated is to find out the personal constitution of each of your clients in order to be able to adapt your massage according to your client needs. And this is the most important of this technique. And let me give you one example in order to explain this holistic point of view, okay? So let's say that I have headache. Um, if I have headache and I go to the doctor, the doctor will give me painkillers, right? But my headache can be produced by many different factors. It can be because I have high blood pressure, or just the opposite, low blood pressure. It can be because I have a lack of any substance in my blood because my diet is a mess. It can be because I work in a very noisy environment, or because I don't sleep properly, I suffer from insomnia. Or it can be because just my massage table is too low, 
and when I work, I force my neck, and this produces headache. Okay, but if I take the painkillers, I will cure or I will release the symptom that is the headache for a few hours. But if tomorrow, let's say that my massage table is in the same position, and I keep working with my forcing my neck, my headache will come back again and again. And you know why? Because the painkillers treat the symptoms, but not the root of the problem. And the root of the problem here will be something environmental. It's not related with my body. It's not related with my mind. It's not related with my energy. It's just as simple as changing the position of your massage table. So uh, if we are not able to look at the human at all these levels, we will be offering painkillers, but not real solutions. But how can I offer solutions? How can I convert my massage treatment that it's a painkiller into a real solution? OK, let's see. I can do it according to Tibetan practice of this Kunian massage. I can do it in different ways. The first way is by doing a pre-treatment consultation. With this pre-treatment consultation, what I want to do is to find out the personal constitution of my client, to find out the personal constitution of my client, OK? How can I do this? The first thing, by visual observation, by looking at our client, because Tibetan Kunye Masas teach us how to look at our client, the way he moves, the way he reacts to our questions, the way he talks, the way he do everything, the way he looks, the color of the skin, the color of the tongue. All this will give us enough information to find out the personal constitution of our client. And according to that, we will be able to readapt or to tailor made the massage according to our client needs. The second method is by questionnaire. We make more than 40 different questions in order to find out the, if there is any kind of imbalance. Because the imbalance can be physical imbalance, but it also can be mental, it also can be social, it can be energy, it can be something like the massage table. Then it's not related even with ourselves. OK, so we talk about many different things, more than 40 questions about digestion, diet, about emotions, about energy, about social life, in order to find out where is the problem. OK, and the third one is by touch. We are therapists. We use our hands like our eyes. And we should have two natural scanners here, so we should feel and we should see through our hands if there is any kind of physical problem or if there is any type of energy blockage. All right, so if we are able to do this, we will be able to offer true solutions and not painkillers, right? So, for example, uh, today we have John here. Thanks, John. He is going to be our model. I did this pre-treatment consultation before now because we don't have time to do it here because it takes from 20 to 40 minutes. Okay, and according to that, I found out that John, it's a Pekin constitution. We have three different types of constitution in Tibetan Kunie Masas. It's Lun, then it's dominant on wind element. It's Tipa, then it's dominant on fire element. And it's Pekin, then it's dominant on earth and water element. So according to John's constitution, now I'm able to readapt or to tailor made this massage technique according to him. So what I'm going to do it's to apply a medium pressure massage. I'm going to repeat each massage stroke five times. I'm going to use warm oil with warm properties because he eats cold properties. Earth and water makes cold properties. I know that it's quite difficult to understand all this in just five minutes. It's not easy. But I'm able to readapt the massage technique according to John's need because sometimes we act like robots. We learn one protocol, one massage protocol, or one beauty protocol, and we make the same protocol to everyone. Because we treat our clients sometimes, our clients sometimes like numbers, but we are not robots, and our clients are not numbers. So that's why we need to look 
each individual in order to tailor-made each treatment, okay? Then once that I know this, I always make a, a lifestyle recommendation chart at the end of the massage. Why? Because, one, because health and beauty is not just one hour technique. It should be part of our lifestyle, right? If we want to make something really effective, it should be part of our lifestyle. So with this uh, lifestyle recommendation chart, I give John some advices about his physical body, mind, energy, emotions, social relations, and natural relations. And that, if I take all these aspects into account, I will give solutions and not painkillers. Okay? So the Kunie massage, this massage technique, I learned this massage technique from some of the uh, personal physicians from His Holiness, the Dalai Lama, up in Mensekan, in, up in the Himalayas. And there, they teach this technique with one therapist or with two therapists. If it's done with one therapist, it takes 40 minutes. If it's done by, sorry, it takes 60 minutes, but if it's done by two therapists, it takes only 40 minutes, okay? What I'm going to need in order to practice this massage technique, okay, let me show you here. I don't know if you can see it, okay? Can you see here, okay? Maybe not. Hello? Okay, let me. Here you can see, right? This is the Sati Dupa, what we call Sati Dupa, okay? So let me show it to the camera. Can you see it? Okay, these are small herbal bags that we made with, the, with three different things with uh, nutmeg, coriander, and cumin powder, okay? It's very easy to make the Sati Dupas. Tomorrow during the workshop, uh, I'm going to show you how to make your own sati dupas, but if you don't have the chance to come to the workshop and you want to know how to make them, just write me an email and I will send you some videos, free videos, that way you will be able to know how to make this. It's really easy, okay? I'm going to use these sati dupas in order to stimulate the energy points of your body, of your client's body, okay? Then I'm going to use oil normal oil. In this case, I'm going to use warm oil with warm properties because John, as I told you, has cold properties. So in order to create balance, I'm going to use warm oil with warm properties. And during the last step, as you can see here, I will be applying this kind of chickpea powder. Okay? I don't know if you can see. Okay. Chickpea powder. Okay, how I'm going to use this? I'm going to use this in order to remove the oil, in order to make a soft exfoliation. Okay, only during the step number eight. The complete massage, uh, it's composed by eight different steps. All right? And each step is composed by many different sequences to be a sad 73 different sequences, okay? The massage is a full body massage. The first step, you can take pictures if you want, but if you don't, uh, send me an email and I will send you the presentation, no problem. I will send you all these uh, illustrations with all the steps, with all the protocol. It will be easy for you, okay? so. The first step, it is done with the client sitting on the massage table, but because we don't have time enough to do the complete massage, what we are going to do is just to skip this step because it's very similar to step number two, Then it's also stimulation with the sati dupas in the head points, okay? So in order to start with the massage, I place two of the sati dupas inside of the oil, and in this case, as John has cold properties, I'm going to put it is warm oil with warm properties. But let's say that John, it's not Pekin constitution. Let's say that John, it's Loon constitution. Loon constitution, it's dominant on error, 
and if it's dominant on Earth, then he needs totally different masses, okay? Because then I will need more deeper pressure masses because also air has cold properties, so he needs deep pressure masses in order to increase the body heat. He will need more repetitions, seven repetitions of each massage stroke. He will need also different oil, but also warm oil with warm properties. Let's say that John is not a loon. Let's say that John is a tipa. Tipa is dominant on fire. So a person dominant on fire, the best thing is not to do massage. But if he or she wants to receive massage, then you do a really soft massage with cold oil, because if you put warm oil, what you are going to do is to increase the body heat, and TIPA, it's, all, it's fire constitution, so you don't want to increase the body heat in a person that it's already fire, okay? It's difficult because these subjects, uh, you need more time in order to understand the complete uh, Tibetan Kunian massage technique, but let's start with the massage, okay? So I place the sati dupas inside of the oil in order they to absorb the oil. And before I apply then on the client, what I do is to try on myself in order not to burn. Okay, so I will start the massage on the head. Okay, on these points. You can see the, you can see here, Okay, all the points in the illustrations and also the effects of the stimulation of each point, right? How I'm going to measure uh, the first point, and it's called Brachma point. I'm going to measure with four fingers distance from the hairline, okay? But the four fingers are not my fingers, are John's fingers. But John has similar fingers than me because he's quite tall, so I'm going to measure according to my fingers. So we see the hairline, we measure four fingers and then here we have the Brachma point. Normally what we do is to stim stimulate this point from 30 seconds to two minutes, according to our client needs. And then four more fingers and go to the crown chakra point. Do you know that this is a very important energy point according to different traditional massage because it connects us with the universal energy force. And then four more fingers. We do, let me turn to the other side. Okay, four more fingers. We do the occipital point. Okay, so if the sati dupa it's cold, then we take another one. We leave the old one on the oil, we take a new one, we see if it's not too hot, and then we do forehead points. One side, the other side. All these energy points, in general, they are good. They are good in order to stimulate the five senses, organs. Also, they release headache, dizziness, insomnia, and it helps to the general relaxation of the full body. So it's a really nice feeling. Okay, I will turn to the back of the ears and base of the skull. Okay, I will repeat exactly the same on the other side. Back of the ears and base of the skull. And then once I finish with the stimulation with the sati dupa, I always do a circular finger friction at each point, okay? So now it's break my point. Crown chakra. Occipital point, forehead, ears, back of the ears, and base of the skull.
basically, this is this step. It's just a very simple step, only based on the energy points of the head. But the relaxation will be full body. So it's a good start of the massage because you, right now, the client, of course, that now we are here in front of the cameras, lights, and this. But after the step number two, the client will be really, really relaxed. Okay. So then I go to step number three. I'm going to uncover the lower limb. And every time that I start with one step, I always start with the stimulation of the sati dupas, with the energy points, OK? Every time I start one step, I'm going to do that except the step number eight, and it's the application of the chip pea powder, as I told you. So I take the sati dupa again. I check if it's not too hot. And now I start with the stimulation of the different energy points of the lower limb, as you can see here. OK? So when you stimulate different energy points, you have two different effects. One on a local level, OK? So for example, at this point, on a local level, uh, I will produce a nurturing of the tendon. I will produce a relaxation of the entire foot. And also, I will increase the mobility of the joint of the big toe, OK? But on a uh, reflex, not on a local level, on a reflex level, this point is related with the throat. It's related with the neck. And it's also related with the thyroid glands. OK, so if I stimulate this point, this specific point, uh, I will release the muscles of the neck. And also, in an emotional level, uh, when I stimulate that point, sometimes you know that when you cannot communicate your emotions, when you have too much stress, you feel like you have a ball here. You even sometimes you cannot swallow because you feel too much emotion like contention. If you stimulate this point, this, this emotional contention, you release that, OK? So we finish with the different points of the lower limb. And as always at the end, you place the sati dupa inside of the oil, and you do a circular finger friction at each point. Simple. Right, so now I just put the oil all along the lower blim. You can do it in two different ways. One with a normal efflorus, okay? You apply the oil on the entire lower limb. Or you can do it also with the sati dupas. So you take the sati dupas and you do it with the sati dupas all along the lower limb. Okay, and now I go palm gliding on the sole of the feet, okay? You can do it two different ways. One, it's really, really soft and slow, and you will use this if the person, it's loom person, wind element dominant, or in this case, because he's earth and water, I need to stimulate the energy on him, because normally they are really stable, and in stable people, we need to stimulate the energy, okay? So instead of doing it soft, I will do it faster on him, OK? This point also is very important for the lymphatic return, because we have here the pecket cistern. Then it's a natural pump of the lymphatic system, OK? Then we go to thumb gliding on the foot. You can do it simultaneously, or you can do it alternating. It's a normal stroke, no different than what we are used to see in other type of massage. And then we do the same with palms. Well, this massage table, it's a little bit low for me, OK? So I need to uh, readapt my posture, because otherwise I will hurt my back. And this is something very important. OK, ankle joints. And then I go to the leg, OK? 
I open my legs in order not to hurt my back, okay, because I've been traveling and teaching all around the world in different spas, and I know that we all know that we should take care of our pastor, but the truth is that 50% of the people that I train, and they are not students, they are professionals, uh, they don't use a proper posture of their back. And you know, it's very important because our body is our more precious tool. So if we don't take care of our most precious tool, bad thing, right? Because if you are 20 years old or 30 years old, that's good. But if once then you turn 40, 50, then your back starts saying stop. Okay, so now I do leg and thigh. In this case, I have to repeat five times each massage stroke, okay? And I will do this a little bit faster than normal in order to stimulate. And now palm kneading. Let me use a bit more of oil. And you can do it also alternating hands, or you can do it simultaneously. Now I jump to the thigh. Be careful with the knee, because it's very nasty if you press much on the bony area, OK? And now I'm going to do ringing. OK, I should repeat its massage stroke five times, but we don't have time to do it. So I'm trying to go a little bit faster in order to show you more strokes, OK? Ringing is like ringing a towel, OK? So we do like this. Be careful with the knee. And then down with the soft effleurus. Okay, now palm gliding, circular palm gliding. Again, you can do it simultaneously or alternating. In this case, I will do it more like faster in order to. And down with the soft effleurus. And we finish with the soft effleurus. Simple and easy. As I told you, this massage is not complicated. What is more complicated, it's everything that you need to take into account when you are doing this in order to find out the personal constitution of your client. Now I'm going to repeat the same on the other lower limb. We are not going to do it. OK, so we jump directly to the abdomen, chest, and upper limbs. Mm -hmm. First of all, as always, we do the stimulation with the sati pass, OK? The first point, it's throat chakra, heart chakra, navel chakra, and then the levators of the scapulas. In Tibetan medicine and in Tibetan massage, the direction of the stimulation is not very important. But in, or, in other uh, traditional medicines, it's very important. So for example, if you do clockwise direction, all right, if you do it this direction, this is stimulating the energy. But if you do in the anti-clockwise direction, what you are doing is relaxing the energy, OK? So it's not important in Tibetan medicine, but it's good if you know and if you want to practice this, OK? And now we do the elevator of the scapula. And it's a very important point because we get a lot of stress in this particular points. Mm 
And as always, at the end, I do circular finger friction at each point. OK, so now I will apply an effleros in order to spread the oil. And here in the domain, OK, we do palm gliding in circular direction. But we can do it clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, right? So what do you think that it's the best in the abdomen, clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction? Put your hands if you think that it's clockwise direction up. OK. So there is almost everyone thinks that it's better clockwise direction, and I guess that you know why. Because it follows the direction of the intestine, right? It's ascending intestine, transverse intestine, descending intestine. But this is good. But if you say anti-clockwise direction, it's also good if you focus your attention into the energy. As I told you before, if you do it clockwise direction, you stimulate the energy. But if what you want to do is to uh, create a relaxing on that er energy point, you do anti-clockwise. But in this case, because he needs to be stimulated with the energy, and also we follow the intestine, so it will be better if we do it clockwise direction, right? OK. So now I will stimulate. The points of the upper limb, you can see there are the points, all right? And here I like to tell you a short story about the different way of thinking of Tibetans, or our way of thinking, OK? Because here, or in Europe, where I come from, uh, when we have a problem, when we feel some tension, when we feel pain, then we go to the therapist, OK? It's what we call uh, reactive clients, because they don't react until they have some kind of physical disease or discomfort or any kind of problem. But in Tibet, what they do, the healers or doctors or traditional shamans or whatever you want to call them, what they do is they visit each family once or twice per month in order to check with them that all of them feel good and in order to preserve the good state of health of each member of the family. So they sit down with all the family and they take tea and they talk about different things. They talk about the community, they talk about religion, spirituality, they talk about many different things in order to find out if all the family members are in perfect conditions. And if they are not, what, they, what he do, the doctor do, or the healer do, it's to give them herbs, some lifestyle recommendations, some nutritional uh, advices, in order to make everyone feel good. And then he receives money for that. But when somebody in the family gets sick, then they have, again, to go to visit the family in order to cure that member but they don't receive any money. And you know why? Because they was not doing their duty properly. Because their duty was to preserve the good state of health of each individual. And this is the way when, that we have to think, more in a proactive way instead of a reactive way. More promoting well-being instead of curing or instead of uh, releasing some tension or pain, right? 
Okay, in this occasion, I will finish already the upper limb. I will do exactly the same on the other upper limb, and I will stimulate the energy points of the head that we already, uh, okay, that we already done. All right, so next, next thing will be to turn my client into lateral position. Okay, I will ask my client to move to the lateral position. I will do all these stimulation points. It's something that in Tibet they do it, but I personally don't like to do it because it's moving too much to your client. You know, it's like your client is not an anomaly. Okay, so it's not good if you move from one side to the other side. It's better if you jump this step. But as His Holiness the Dalai Lama said, uh, learn the rules properly, learn the rules really good in order to know when to break them. Okay, so every time that I teach this, I teach the way it is, and then once that you already learn this technique, you will be able to adapt it according to your needs, you will be able to adapt it according to your client needs, okay? So then what I will do is to ask my client to turn face down, okay? And I will repeat the step number six. It's similar. Okay. Step number six, it's similar to step number three. When we, when we did the lower limb in face up position, it's almost exactly the same. So I will repeat exactly the same in face down position. So I'm not going to do this again because we don't have time to do the complete massage. So I'm going to skip step number six. Okay, so then we go to step number seven. Step number seven, it's on the back and upper limbs. We don't have time. I think to do the complete uh, back, okay, but well, we don't have enough time to do this, but let me explain you, okay? So you stimulate all these energy points with the sati dupa, then you do some palm gliding, then you do some thumb gliding on different energy points. Each point has different effects, okay? And at the end, once that you finish this step seven, what you do is to spread the chickpea powder, okay? So now he don't have oil here, so it's not going to be real effective, but what you do is to spread chickpea powder. And you make a soft effleras, palm, circular palm effleras in different directions. It doesn't matter the direction because it's so soft, then you do it in order to remove the oil in order to make a really soft exfoliation, okay? So you do it on the back, then you cover again, you do it the lower limb, you ask your client to face up. That's why I tell you then we are moving the client constantly. So it's, you do the lower limbs, you face up, again lower limbs, then abdomen, chest, upper limb, and that's the complete massage. So as you see, the massage itself is not very difficult. Once then you learn the complete protocol, once then you learn uh, or memorize all the steps that you have to follow, it's quite easy. But the massage itself, it's in a way useful. It's in a way useless, sorry, if you don't take into account all these holistic uh, method that you need to do in order to adapt the massage according to your client needs and also if you want to do this uh, instead offering painkillers, offering real solutions because that's the most important of this Kunie massage technique more than the massage practice itself. So my recommendation it's uh, okay let's go to the Next, okay, if you have any doubt about this technique, if you want me to send you the PDF with all this step-by-step -step massage, send me an email and I will be very happy to send you the PDF with this presentation. My recommendation is to keep 
uh, opening your eyes to try to have a good holistic point of view about your clients. And it doesn't matter if you are a massage therapist or if you are an esthetician or you are a dentist. If you open your mind, once then you make the click, it's impossible to go back. It's impossible. So you will, I don't practice a holistic method only when I do CUNY MSS. I have a holistic point of view always. It's impossible to, to, to go back in my mind. I mean, once then you turn holistic, you will be holistic the rest of your life. So my recommendation is keep opening your mind, keep studying, and try to look at the human, at your client, like a unique individual, and like body, mind, energy, emotions, social environment, and natural environment. Thank you very much for coming. Have fun today. Keep studying. And if you have any doubt, I will be there in a few minutes. Thank you. Caesar, thank you so much. You know, um, I'm a licensed esthetician as well as a registered nurse, and I really have seen the changes in the medical community um, and accepting massage and different therapies more so because they're understanding how well it does on the muscular skeletal system, but also the power of touch. So thank you so much for, for coming in today. We really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you.